Ball. Now he's a passing bar. Ball. Lateral pass side. Get there. Passing arrows. Right to follow through pass and hold directly to the chest of the target person to whom you're passing the ball. Close up three. You do an adjustment. Drop step. Maintain. See ball. Look at the ball, see your path and platform here while also seeing the target. So you look at one thing, see this, see that. Ball. Ball. Always direct the ball where you want to. Ball goes over your left shoulder. Drop your left foot. Do what's called a lateral or side pass. Passing arrows are today's chest right there. Net zone seven. In front, please. Ball in front. Off. One thing I do not recommend is that you pass the ball this way. The side looks like this. You are stuck in this position. You don't go any further. If you go to this position, you can't move anymore. All you can do is this or this or this. And normally that's one of the biggest passing problems that young ladies have. Ball. Get there. Look at the ball. I can see my platform. I can see the target while I'm looking at the ball. Clap pass now. Collapse pass, boom! Get there. A little shorter, Chris. Collapse pass, ah! My arrow stayed here, I made the play. Collapse pass, this facing right here. Use the back foot down as a rudder. Right foot, lead, that was a right collapse pass. Right step crossover, now left step crossover. Get there. Okay, stop camera. A right, left, right. I tell people that's an opposite pattern when you're taught as a hitting approach. I just tell people to use your hitting approach to get better past the wall. Your hitting approach will cover a lot of ground by just taking your normal and the right hand hitting approach, a left, right, left, let's see how far we can get. Left, right, left. <laughs> okay. Go. Left, right, left. Get there. Seven. Get there. You cover a lot of ground this time. Make it go there. Now, if you really have to go far, then put me over there. Make the play. Lay out, lay on the side. Right. 
Fast hold. Biggie, you know, I know it's a biggie. You're up there in pads, and biggie, come down just a bit. Alright, I'm in ready position. Put your hands up. Basically, your forearms are pretty much aligned with the top of your thighs. Ready position, and away we go. Hold step. Setting, you get to the ball, make your hands ball shaped, left right progression is taught, just like left right pass, left right set. Get to the ball, stabilize temporarily, put hands close to head, ball comes in, push it back out, there's flexion in the wrist, and come through quickly, it's called a set of quick hands. Towards the net, right step crossover, away from that, left step crossover. So you're going towards the net, you step towards it. You go away from the net, you step away from it. Footwork pattern is right and long. Right step, cross over, and you come in and stabilize. As in your jumping attack, when you come in in this fashion, with a greater step, you going towards. The same as in the setting approach. You're going towards net, right step, cross over, you now stabilize. Hands go up. Away from net, left step, cross over, Again, like the pass, you put your left foot away from the ball. Go, and then set, and step through. It's called a set, step through technique. Just an easy zone. Right step, crossover. Left step, crossover. Right step, crossover. Get there, and shape. Left step, crossover. Right, right step, crossover. Hopefully 
they will see all those things. A big thing is if you don't fall roll. You do a lead directional step with your left, step to where the ball is going, then a powerful right left, put yourself in position, keep the ball in front of you. The biggest thing is you gotta see the difference between untrained hitters and trained hitters. Untrained hitters are gonna hit the ball here. Trained hitters are gonna keep it out here like gauging it. And then they're gonna do the whipping motion here in front. That's the thing to look for. And you look for feet, then right here. When you see analyze your cells, things to keep in mind. Serving is all biomechanical. You're trying to line up as much of your body's power as possible to direct a ball where someone asks you to make it go. There are many inefficiencies that are taught. Basically, the biggest thing that happens is you're probably told at some point in time to hold the ball in front of you, throw it up, and hit it over the net. That causes problems because if you throw the ball from here, the way we are made to follow through is this direction. So even if you try to throw the ball over here, it's going to come back this way. Ball, please. Thank you. I'll just have them rotate this way. Hold the ball here, throw it straight up. You see the body lines from here, up and down. That's going to cause you a lot of problems. It's going to cause you to hit the ball like this. Take your left arm, put it down. Lean over here. Your hand now turns down with the thumb down. You lose your balance. This leg kicks out. We call it stepping over a pile of dog poop. You follow through across your body, and you end up like this, as you all see on video analysis. Those are all things that most of you will see, and it's caused by this little culprit right here. The no-brain ball causes you to look very stupid. So what we want you to try to get you to do is when you throw a ball, start it here, one, two, three hit balls, just like as in attacking. When you throw the ball, the hand turns this way, Force the ball to go from here, approximately 45 degree angle, up and to the power point zone in front and above your hitting shoulder. This is the W that you should see when you attack ball. The right foot is a push off foot. It pushes forward. If you want to try to serve the ball straight forward, so the opponent's five zone, you line everything up, make the face of your palm point towards the five zone, keep your non-hitting hand up, making a W. You're trying to serve across the court to the opponent's one. You step that way. Don't try to be fancy and go across. One, two, three. Right there. Ball, please. Ball starts here. Try to eliminate this. Are you a little fancy thing? That's a variable that does not need to be there. A lot of times when people start up here, they've been taught and they do the way called a split. You're already in trouble. One. Two, three. Ball, good. Look at your ball. One, two, three. Ball, please. From the side. One, two, three. Ball, please. One, two, three. A good serve really only has to go 31 feet. Don't think of a serve as having to go clear to the opponent's in line. Because if you serve it one foot long, it's out of bounds. So a good serve can be contacted. Fun for the books. <laughs> this is a deadly serve right here. And that short serve looks like this. Pop and drop. Hard serve. Toss it to my left, you see my arm come down a bit, and I had to lean over and correct with a hand. When you contact ball, W, the V in your hand is here, the thumb and forefinger to the ceiling, 
Ball comes through. You have an elbow wrist exchange right here as you put in the attack. Free hit pause. One, two, three. And this is what it looks like. You're going to jump serve. Two ways. Most people say throw with the same hand what you hit. Use your hitting approach. Left, right, left. Put the ball up and in front of you. Approach to the ball. Duck. Da da. As long as you jump from behind the court, similarly to a back row attack, you can contact ball and land in the court. The approach. Left. Right, left. Nice slide there. See me done. Left. Right, left. A short approach. It's just left, right, left. Left. Right, left. Follow through, and we're both into the net. Same hitting hint apply to jump serve. All three things apply. Three hints, look for them. Weaning serve. One, two, three. Thank you. Blocking. Blocking is a mental game. Good hitter here. If I can take that hitter, expressions like put him in the tank. Wow, I hit the ball. Wow. Oh, let's stop him from doing that. Well, it takes about two in a row, and even really good players start thinking about what's going on. Most high school coaches, and most coaches in general, will place their outside blockers pretty much in net zone nine the middle blockers in five, and then wonder why the ball goes between their outside and middle blockers. Well, most high school players, and most players in general, hit the ball into the court. They do not hit down line. So here I am. Chris makes a shot. Go ahead and set. Just throw up. Here I am. Huh, imagine that. Now, in blocking, well, I can't, I can't block, I'm not big enough. If you take your hands when you block, and don't patty cake it, take your thumb, put it to the ceiling, put your little fingers parallel to the top of the net, it's amazing, it's like we're built to do this. The hand will fit over the top of the net in this fashion. Most players hit the ball into the court, as Chris just did, and they hit the ball four inches from the top of the tape. This is the top tape. Most of the players that you will see in play against will hit the ball that direction, and they will hit it no more than this high above the top of the tape. Most blocking errors are because people jump up with their hands like this and they jump too high. So now, a good blocker is a good blocker if you change, make the person who's attacking the ball change his or her shot selection. Most players don't have too many shots which they can hit, partially because of what we talked about earlier, hitting the ball in this fashion. This pretty well, pretty well dictates how many shots you can attack. I put my blockers in three, five, and seven. This is where they start. Most of the time, all they have to do is take a shovel step or a side step, hop out, and that's far enough. Go up from here. Whatever happens, once you get ready to go up, you stop and go straight up. Don't slide or fade, it's called. It's dangerous for you, it's dangerous for the other people. Here you are, there's also a step crossover, imagine that. That's familiar? You can beat the person. So what happens is, I'm sitting here blocking. Ball goes over net. I relax. It's the easiest thing. These guys are standing here chatting. Oh, I've got a setter, back row setter. Outside hitter here. Gets into the court a lot, and then we're going to block inside. And a lot of times, just reach out and touch each other. Just know where we are. Now, I know Chris is a good hitter. What do I do? I want to see what Chris is going to do. He 
because Chris has to jump up into the air. What kind of setter? If the setter's good that night, the setter's off a little bit. And I'm going to see what Chris does before I do anything. I prepare to do what I'm supposed to do. As the ball goes over the net, I watch the ball off the passer's arms. As the passer, I dictate right now, is it an overpass? You know that. As soon as the ball is touched and it comes off the passer's arms, you know that. So, no overpass. Okay, and now I know where the setter is. I can see all this happening. I can see people over here. I can see over here. I can see the setter coming to the back row here. Although I'm looking at the passer, I can see Doug in front of the back row. And I can see my hitter, Chris, here. He's my responsibility. That is also my responsibility if I'm a blocker. He's a front row attacker. He's a front row setter. <coughs> On the second ball over, I'm going to have to open up and play an attack second ball done by the setter or a dunk. That's my ball and a cross court. Actually, the opposite blocker across here should be taking him as an attacker one-on-one. -on -one. I see ball go over, I see pass or pass the ball. I know immediately it's an overpass. If it is an overpass, I make sure if I'm going to attack the ball, that I get an approach called a right left, first hitting hand, second hitting hand, third hitting hand. I'm an attacker now using a two-step approach. I communicate with my team. Ball! Right left and backwards, pre hit ball position, non handing any hand up, and swing through ball. One thing that some people use that I was taught in college, if the ball's real tight, go up, cup hand, and wrist it down. You don't take a full follow through. It's a wrist right here. It works very well. It's an old ball statement. Boy, I've seen Chris use it also in Manchester. Now, as I'm watching the passer pass the ball, no lower pass, it's now a setter. We have already communicated the team. Setter's back row, setter's front row, setter's live, setter's not live. I see the setter now set the ball. I watch the ball for the first two to three feet off the setter's hands. I know where it's going immediately. As I do that, I know focus on my attacker. Because that attacker's going to tell me what to do. And in the meantime, I kind of stay relaxed. I'm hanging out. I'm just watching the show. I have the best position in the gym right now. It's a blocker. They have to do all this stuff. I'm just checking out what's going on. Talk to my team. Here we go. Watch it come. Then, as this happens, go ahead. I see set. Ball. I've done my job. Chris took a line shot. We play an inside out defense, I call it. Our blockers are inside, our back row's outside. This is when it gets fun. You have done your job as a block. I used to tell my college players, great block, and they go, touch the ball. You make the hitter take a shot. Our defense, if you can take away the shot the hitter wants, it's a mind game on the hitter. That's also allowing your defense to be in position. Now the defense might change if we call what's block, we call block e line. My defense needs to change. It might go what's called a rotate defense, possibly, or counter, rotate, in out, there's all kinds of names. My back row behind me is going to change if I block here. Back row is going to change its defensive positioning if I block here. It's okay, here we go. Lead with the thumbs, follow through. I tell people to look at the ball. If you can catch the ball, you can block it. There's still a ball. If you can catch it, you can block it. Blocking motion is like this. Go. Up, down. Thumbs up, fingers back, and keep your fingers back. You do not want to do this. High level ball, whew, my fingers are real sensitive. You don't want to have that happen. I've never had it happen. And I like to block. I'm a little guy compared to the big guys I've played with a lot of times. And blocking is like a mind game with him. If I can get him a couple times in a row, he ain't going to forget it, and it pumps everybody up. And the block has an easy job. Sort of easy. Here I am, I dictate ball. Right. Up, thumb up. Always follow through. Outside blockers, put your outside hand outside the ball. This hand on the ball. People always say line up. Move to where your hand, your outside hand, is on the hitting hand of the attacker. For your high school level players, that's going to be enough. Up, 
I didn't have to go to Mesmer very much. <laughs> that was a good shot for Chris because I'm up too high and he comes down underneath. That'd be good in video. On a men's net, and this is something for you guys, please, if you can get this high, don't. Because you're not ready for Schnarr. Thank goodness it was here on me. That, you don't want that to happen. It's a great shot. We've talked about it before. I went too high. I don't usually have that problem with men's net. I went too high and Chris came down into it. Thank goodness it wasn't here. It was here instead. Smart shot. Stupid on my part. This is all I need to do right here on this block, that high. Get you. Ball. I made him take that shot. My defensive player, think about it. What have we worked on? Oh, wow. Let's get crossover pass. Here we go. Pretty easy to make that play. So force the shot. Here we go. I line up over Chris's hand. Ball. Good enough, thanks.